Rainy day vibes, elites. Rainy day vibes. I, I don't know what it is about this world, but when there's a day that it consists of rain, you know, water falling from the sky, I, I just want to get on this world and play. So uh, that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to work on the very next episode, episode number 60. Pam is impatiently waiting in the background. You should have heard the things that Pam was saying to me. Yeah, so the dog back there, the Minecraft dog, the things that the Minecraft dog was saying to me in between episodes. Disgusting. I, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot repeat it. I won't repeat it here, but just know that the Pam, it, it, Pam is a lot different. It, it, Pam, Pam is different you you will be surprised so uh we're gonna start today's episode by planting one of these things right here a chorus flower so a chorus flower is obtained in the end we picked it up when we went to the end for i guess the first time or at least for end exploration the first time uh the the only time <laughs> uh you grow this stuff on end zone so end zone like that chorus flower like that and then we wait uh, and we wait and we wait we're not gonna stand here and wait all up so long we're just gonna let this thing grow in the background because this thing provides chorus fruit and then we can smelt chorus fruit up into i popped chorus that's what it's called uh, boom would you take a look at that it grew i guess we are gonna stay here and watch it but uh anyways you smelt the chorus fruit up into popped chorus combine it with something that is great for decorating on modern builds like what we built in the last episode. So basically, just gonna let that thing grow and I'll try and remember to harvest it uh, every now and then. Now, we have a shell of a build. We haven't really begun any detailing at all. The inside looks like this. It's empty, it's plain. The garage is over here, also empty and plain. I think what we're gonna do is decorate sort of in steps. When you have a build that you're trying to decorate and finish up, it's best to do uh, the decorating kind of in order, in some sort of organized uh, way, and so, uh, some sort of organized fashion. So that that means we're gonna start with one part of the build that part of the build is definitely going to be the garage the garage is going to be the easiest part of this build for us to decorate so a garage uh, usually has cement flooring we could go with concrete because concrete is you know concrete and would work great in a garage but I I just think the concrete texture is way 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 too flat so stone will be a little bit better for a garage flooring now I'm gonna be cheap and and collect all this dirt. I need this dirt. This is this is valuable to me still. I I don't know why, but it, yeah, I'm just gonna keep it. Back to this thing for a minute. Take a look at that. One flower turned into three, and those three could turn into even more. The game will randomly branch off of the central, I guess, chorus stem and create more chorus flowers every now and then. We'll talk about it more when we set up a farm for these things very very soon. But yeah, that's kind of cool anyways back in the garage so the stone flooring looks good I, I feel like this is the perfect garage flooring but uh we could also add a little bit more detail to it by putting some random andesite bits in here andesite looks like worn down concrete worn down cement so i'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit in the middle there maybe it's really really worn out over here on the entrance of the garage the flooring should probably continue forwards we don't need the foundation of the house there that wouldn't really look very good and then on the outside hey watch this on the outside side we would continue the garage flooring uh forward a little bit as well now we don't have a lot of space here if pam were driving whatever pam drives uh pam would have to turn right away because there's a tree right there we're not going to move the tree the tree is great so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and do a small driveway going out here a little bit more worn out uh concrete outside because of course the weather if it were raining it would wear out the concrete a little bit so something like that that'll be good for now now let's go ahead and get back inside of the garage so if you have a garage in your house or if you've been somewhere where there is a garage you you probably know that sometimes the garage will kind of raise up near the back of it when it's connecting to the house so that's what we're going to do over here we're going to do slabs right there to kind of raise the garage up and help us walk right into pam's house pam's house will be raised up by one block now our garage how we built it has three separate windows those windows could definitely be black stained glass black stained glass is probably my favorite stained glass but we didn't go with black stained glass on this build because the build is already very very dark the black stained glass uh, panes or just blocks in general wouldn't work here they wouldn't really help the windows stand out from a distance so that's why we went with white over here usually i would recommend trying to match the colors of the panes throughout your whole build now let's go ahead and fill this in sort of forgot to do that and then on the front i think we could probably work a window in here uh maybe not maybe not we could do like a two wide window that should work if we were to take more black stained glass and then go outside let's see if this actually works um does it fit there oh for sure 
for sure that works really well that adds more detail and depth into that area that's perfect we're gonna go ahead and leave that now inside of the garage we have this ceiling area in here now because we put the window there we're gonna have to change things up a little bit but uh we have two really big options how i see it right here we could do staircases upside down there that would look good it would be staircasey but uh, i don't really like that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do spruce going right across uh kind of in between the windows here then we'll go ahead and strip the spruce just like that then finally we'll come back in here with some oak slabs and place them in there like that but we will get a little bit of lighting in there because that could get dangerous so spruce uh, or oak in there but then we have this weird connection right there so let's go ahead and actually maybe drop things down like that and hmm maybe not maybe not like that maybe not maybe just like that ah, maybe a staircase right there an oak staircase and you know a garage is sort of like a work area so let's go ahead and start decorating the garage with uh some crafting tables a crafting table right there and then maybe we do one more crafting table right next to it lots of workbenches in here staircases in there that's gonna definitely work but things get a little weird at the front here because if we were to continue the ceiling right across it would cut off the window and i don't like that so we'll do just birch staircases in there and that'll look good we'll call that good in here we'll go ahead and just fill in even more slabs just like that and there we go we have a garage ceiling that's detailed and it works a big tip when it comes to really doing any part of your build ceiling or floor or even wall is to think about color palettes so the floor here has lots of gray we did andesite and stone that works out perfectly the blocks blend together exactly how we like them to now the ceiling lots of brown tones a spruce and oak strip spruce and oak planks work very very well together because they are similar in tone you see stripped oak wood would have worked great in here too but there would be less contrast and i think that subtle contrast on the ceiling with these with these beams going across looks really really good now on this back wall we have this weird open area i'm thinking a window could go right there that would probably help break up this wall make things a little bit more open definitely that looks really really good now the decorations inside of the garage that's kind of tricky but also not really we can just do machine -y looking things so we'll do a stone cutter a grindstone that would be good and then we have the two crafting tables right there we'll put the stone cutter definitely off of the floor you wouldn't want to step on a stone cutter in like a real world building so probably best to keep things like this with blades off of the floor we'll go ahead and build a simple little bench with some spruce trap doors just like that and that is going to be good for the saw the grindstone that can really go anywhere i think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hang it from the wall right there and actually let's go ahead and extend this bench down one more uh, i guess uh one more block see now we have a bench that goes straight across here and we can actually lower the grindstone down one block put it right there and then maybe that's uh for sharpening tools or, or just something it, it works it's good right there that looks good now you know what you know what you know what we're gonna move these crafting tables over here and we'll have this whole wall be our work wall because as it stands right now we don't have a lot of room for for much inside of here but we can reposition things and actually i think build a motorcycle maybe pam has been trying to say that pam drives a motorcycle the whole time so what we're gonna need is two grindstones to start where where's the grindstone uh what do i not have <laughs> ah slabs i don't have slabs all right so two grindstones just like that that's a good start then i think we need dark oak wood the grindstone pole stem uh, legs they they match dark oak wood pretty much perfectly i don't think i have any over here though okay so let's see if i can remember how to do this off at the top of my head so we start with a temporary block we place a grindstone right there like that and then a grindstone right there like that these are the wheels to the motorcycle then we can go ahead and get rid of that block now right in between these blocks we place a slab that's where we would be sitting uh right above the slab we do the handlebars just like that then on the front i think we want to do another slab right there mm-hmm mm -hmm. and then finally right on the back for this motorcycle or, or maybe maybe we do it on the front but on the back we do something like that uh that's like a motorcycle <laughs> i think that's a motorcycle guys uh yeah that's a motorcycle that's great that's perfect we won't ever see it move because i don't think pam will, will use it very much we won't let her but yeah that's perfect that's a motorcycle and that adds a lot of detail takes up a lot of space in here don't mind that it is slightly floating ignore that fact you, you didn't even know that it's slightly floating off the ground just just don't think about it we need a back door in the garage we'll go ahead and do one of these doors to match the front that looks good we're not too concerned with this side of the build but we will work on it when we go outside 
outside and start the detailing. Over here, we'll do another uh, another one of, the, one of these doors, but let's put it like that so we sort of, you know, step right up into the house just like that. That's good. Maybe this block, though, it should be turned to stone. I, I think that'll make a little bit more sense, like the, like the stone kind of goes all the way up there. So stone right there, door right there. That's good. We'll work on the inside of the house in just a second. Now, uh, finally, we definitely need some light in this garage. If we didn't have light in here, uh, we would have a problem. We would have mobs spawning in here. So let's go ahead and make some lanterns. We'll do a lantern right there on the workbench. That would kind of make sense. Maybe a lantern hanging. Um... We don't have any great hanging areas, so what we can do is we can do a table, maybe maybe a table right there with scaffolding, lantern right there, that'll be good, and then finally, one more up front, let's just go ahead and hang it from that spot right there, three should be good, we should control all of the light in here, yeah, definitely, this is all good and actually because those are trap doors the light will actually be let through it a little bit which is kind of cool we're gonna put more lighting outside though so uh it's not that big of a deal but i think that is actually gonna be mostly it for the garage i would like to do one more thing though maybe this wall right here uh we could definitely get away with hanging a tool an iron hoe definitely pam is 100 percent a farmer yeah definitely that'll look good Pam's hoe right there for all farming needs. Perfect. Chorus plant update. Take a look at this. We have four flowers now, but this one looks weird. So we will go ahead and shoot it. And we will go ahead and shoot this other weird looking one right there. Those things look weird because they were ready to be harvested. Once the uh, flowers close up like those ones did, that means they will not grow anymore. These ones will continue to grow. These uh, flowers basically control the growth of a stem. If there's no flower on the stem, like right there, the stem will no longer grow. So those ones are completely done. And technically, we could harvest them, but we're just going to go ahead and wait for this whole thing to finish growing you are finished so you will go away uh and you're stuck up there okay okay <laughs> we'll go ahead and climb up there i don't have i can't spare this stuff right now i need to collect all of this anyways let's move on to the interior of pam's house for now and we'll come back and look at the garage at the end and see if we have any other ideas so the flooring in pam's house will actually be our accent wood from our block palette uh the block palette i did move it over there it's right there and oak was our accent now, the inside flooring of your build can really be anything. It doesn't matter at all. It just sort of depends on the vibe that you're going for. I'm going for a nice homey vibe, so I'm thinking that oak wood would do really, really well in here. And again, it kind of works into our block palette, so it'll look nice. We will be able to see the floor from the outside, so we kind of have to consider that. Now, Pam's house is actually not that big inside, so we don't have a lot of uh, space to work with here. What I am thinking, though, is that Pam wants a kitchen in the house. So this furnace will be repurposed purposed over into Pam's kitchen. We'll go smoker right there, and then maybe... Uh, you know what? Maybe we do a double smoker setup, I think. Or you know what? You know what? You know what? We'll do a cauldron. A cauldron will be a great sink. So the kitchen will be back here. We'll do smoker right there, and then sink right there. That'll be good. Then we need a counter block. Probably a good counter block would be smooth stone or uh, smooth quartz. I'm thinking smooth quartz because we have the smooth stone right there. So smooth quartz there, smooth quartz there, and then probably smooth quartz there as well. It creates a little bit of a pattern that I don't really like. So we're going to go ahead and swap those and do all smooth quartz there. And we'll do smoker and the sink right next to each other. We'll put the sink right there, the smoker right there, then water inside of the sink. Right above the sink, we'll need either a lever or a hook. I think a tripwire hook would be a little bit better for this build, just because uh, the lever with the particle effect, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of it. But right there, now we have a kitchen. Now, in the kitchen, we could do cabinets up here, which I think we actually will. I was thinking about doing some sort of uh, like gallery wall right there in that corner, but the cabinets, uh, seeing as this is a kitchen, would probably make a little bit more sense. Now, when you're doing kitchen cabinets, you could either use barrels or chests. For a floating cabinet, I sort of like to use uh, chests. I, I just think it looks better. Personal preference, though. So now we have something that looks like that. In the corner, we need to connect our cabinets somehow. You have lots of options when it comes to connecting your cabinets in the corner, but my favorite one is this right here. 
oak wood uh, like solid oak wood like that so we can't see the uh the i guess log end we do that right there that's good now we need some sort of covering on these cabinets because right now they're floating and it looks really really weird the covering is also very very easy to do uh now thankfully we're working with a lot of brown tones on this cabinet which means spruce trap doors are going to fit into this very very nicely so what i think we'll do is we'll do that right there and then we'll do the same thing on the other side to kind of cap that off then above these cabinets we'll do even more uh even more spruce trap doors so basically just something like this going over to the corner same thing right there and then the corner we won't ever see it so it doesn't matter so we'll just place one down like that and boom we're good to go now those cabinets are all connected to the wall sort of to make things even better we could go ahead and do this and that right there could do it again there and not there though because of the hook so i'm thinking we're just going to go ahead and eliminate that entirely that's fine and put a fence post right there instead i think that'll work or we could just do this actually we'll just do that that looks good we'll have that continue all the way down we'll do the same thing over here never mind the fence post boom kitchen finished complete it's very small but it, but it is a kitchen it works and hey this thing is done so we go ahead and shoot it off or we can just go ahead and punch the bottom of this thing and have it break now these plants break interestingly if i were to break this arm right here only the things above that arm would break so if we were trying to harvest this all we would break it down there but if we only wanted say this part harvested we'd break that every single stem does not drop a fruit you, you won't get one every time now uh, we want this whole thing to break so we'll just go ahead and break that there that all falls but unfortunately uh as i wanted to show off i didn't get that plant the, the flower up top if you want them you need to manually break them yourself otherwise you're not going to get them back definitely something that you should know if we place the chorus fruit in a furnace put some fuel in there this stuff will cook up into popped chorus fruit good news now pam needs a bed and pam needs carpet as well in her house usually when you're doing a room and you're going to have a bed and a carpet in that same room i recommend matching the colors if you're not going to match the colors do colors that work well together like blue and yellow that kind of works well together uh maybe the warm tones in general so red and yellow red and orange uh, yellow and orange something like that but uh, if you haven't noticed pam likes purple so we're gonna go ahead and do purple for pam's bed and purple for pam's carpet as well to match her fancy collar but uh here's the thing take a look at pam's house it's nice right don't insult it that would upset her but uh it's small right there's not a lot of room so instead of a bedroom a traditional bedroom we're gonna go ahead and do a bed right there then a trap door and a trap door oh no oh no oh no <laughs> we have a problem that's the problem when working on smaller scales so uh never mind we're gonna move the bed and put it over here we have a bed right there trap door right there trap door right there we can still get through the door uh those actually line up perfectly but i'm, I'm thinking that these trap doors should be placed the other way around so let's go ahead and break the bed do uh some temporary blocks right there and flip those trap doors around i think it's it's a small detail but I think it'll look a little bit better. Pam sleeps on a futon. There we go. Boom. That, that's what that is. That's perfect. We need a big window in there now. So really what I'm trying to do today, Elites, is just show you my, my detailing process if you haven't caught on by now. When I'm detailing a build, uh, I'm basically thinking everything that I'm saying in today's episode. I'm trying to make things look uh, normal and make sense and also trying to work with the space that we have efficiently. We have a nice house that looks it, it looks nice from the outside because it's kind of on a smaller scale. You see, personally, if I were to have built this house on a larger scale, detailing the inside would be a whole lot easier because there'd be more space, but the outside wouldn't look as nice. In my opinion, these suburban house builds look better on a smaller scale. Like what I have here, this this looks really, really good and put together and finished to me. I mean, other than the outside details not being there. I, I don't know. Basically, the smaller scale looks good, but you have less detailing room inside. So you need to be a little more clever and smart with your space. So we have a bed right there. That's good. Now I'm thinking that we could maybe do a small table in here and maybe... Uh, these two blocks we could do a two wide table right there but what do we want to do the table 
All right, so looking at the tones that we're working with in here, uh, we have the dark oak right there and the dark oak right there. So I think it might be nice to make a dark oak table right here, but we have the glass connecting to the back. Now, usually I wouldn't like that, but that's actually okay. We'll put things on this table like lanterns and we actually won't be able to see it too much. From the back, it'll be really obvious, but again, we're not too worried about the back of this build. Uh, we won't see it from over there. But uh, let's say you absolutely hated that. You do have another option. And that option is this right here. So upside down staircase, upside down staircase, and you have a better table than what you had before. Perfect. Just like that. That is Pam's table. Now, for sure, carpet. I, I definitely like the idea of carpet, but not in the kitchen. Rugs do not go in the kitchen. That would be very, very dangerous. So we'll go ahead and do a two wide uh, little rug right there. That's perfect. Now, finally, I think it would be cool to get some bookshelves in this house because bookcases look really really good but we do have a problem we have windows everywhere we have lots of windows here windows over here and bookcases will not they won't work very well with the windows so uh we're gonna have to figure something out here do i want to actually eliminate the windows and make them shorter for bookcases and bookcases only eh, not really so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this table over to the front side of this house maybe this corner over here or no maybe not that corner maybe this corner right over here and we'll put bookcases on the back by that window you see bookcases are one of my all-time favorite things to use for decorating a build because the detail on the bookcases the bookshelves is really really good now this house is smaller so if we were to go crazy with the uh, bookcases i think things would look a little too busy so let's go ahead and do maybe two sitting right here next to each other like that that'll look good then maybe right on top of those bookcases just to kind of finish things off a little bit we'll do some oak slabs i think that'll look good and kind of yeah help cap those off so something like that that's cool let's do this instead uh three bookcases just like that i think that looks good it, it makes it feel a whole lot more full in here but i think that's fine now we are running out of space which means the detailing is going to have to be it is gonna have to be stopped here but we can still do a few more things we need a table pam needs a table to eat at she's civilized so let's go ahead and do a spruce fence maybe right there spruce fence and then right on top of that spruce fence we're gonna need a spruce trap door like this to make a small table just like that and then finally right in front of that we need a chair let's go with maybe maybe not a jar oak one let's go with the birch chair that should be good uh yeah a birch chair just like that we're gonna have to not stand on that but yeah that is good now the ceiling we're just gonna do uh upside down birch staircases in there and uh beams but the beams we're gonna try something out here we're gonna try and use stripped birch logs to go right across that will make this ceiling feel really really bright which is something that this build needs this is insanely dark and we're gonna keep things nice and high up here too i think a high ceiling in this build is definitely better so beams like that maybe we leave that three gap in the middle i think that'll look good see when i talk about balance this is another one of those things lots of darkness you need to bring brightness into your build otherwise it will be dark which isn't necessarily a problem if you're trying to build a dark gloomy looking build but i'm not exactly trying to do that if i were trying to build a haunted house i would definitely be using all dark tones and making things creepy but yeah, this is not a haunted house at all. So we'll need lots of brightness on the top of this build if we want this to actually look bright and happy. Now, uh, initially, I was thinking that I don't really need a window here because the garage is right there, the roof. But I'm thinking about switching that up. Let's go ahead and actually open this up and put a window right there so we don't have such a large dark space. I think that looks a whole lot better. And from down here, I can't even see the garage roof anyway. So I think that's good. Now, the final thing that we need in here, two things actually, uh, lighting, well, three things, make it three. We're gonna need lighting, but we're also going to need a little bit more floor details because we do have this big, giant, open plane space that I am not really a big fan of. So, we can come in here with some stripped oak logs, place them randomly on the floor. This pattern will be broken up and detail will be added. If we wanted to get fancy, we could even place some oak logs facing up and strip them for even more detail. 
At the front door, to make things convenient, we'll go ahead and place an oak pressure plate. Now the door will open and close automatically. So floor check, now we need lighting. We'll go ahead and put a lantern over there, that'll look good, close that, and uh, then we'll check our light level. What are we doing in here? 11, 10, 11, oh wow, we actually may only need two lanterns. Uh, what about this spot? Well, there's a trap door there, we don't need to worry about that. Let's go ahead and put another lantern in here anyways. We'll put it uh, maybe right there on the floor. That'll kind of help fill things up a little bit. Now, the last thing that Pam definitely needs in here is a painting or two. So let's go ahead and grab some wool and place maybe, maybe, um, well, honestly, with all the windows, we might only have room for one painting. Uh, yeah, let's just go with one painting and we'll put that painting right in here. Uh, I think this will be the spot for it right there. Uh, maybe a one wide one. Yeah, perfect. Symmetrically placed on that wall. I like it. That's perfect. So we have the garage done and we have Pam's interior done. That means we need to do the exterior and make sure this house looks good from a distance. This is my favorite part of detailing elites. I don't know. I like terraforming a lot. Uh, popped chorus fruit right there in our inventory. Now we can go over here and craft purple -pur bricks if we wanted to or uh, somehow, oh, with blaze rods. We need blaze rods. With blaze rods, we can go ahead and actually craft some end rods, which is big. We're gonna go ahead and craft maybe eight to start. We don't have a bunch of blaze rods. We don't have too much popped chorus fruit quite yet. Uh, eight should definitely be good. So first, the porch. The porch looks good, but it needs a little bit more. We'll do a stone brick wall right there, mossy wall right there. We'll do a mossy wall over there, and then finally, another mossy wall right there. Love the moss things. Right on top of this wall, end rod right up here, end rod, boom, like that. And then on each and every other one as well. Right here, we'll just chop that out. Not a big deal. And then in here, uh, I'll come back with a quartz slab so we can't see that. This is how you do a fancy modern porch support area. Now these end rods also double as a light source, so the front of this build is fully illuminated. That doesn't mean that we won't put any lanterns on the porch, because lanterns look good, uh, but yep, that'll look good. Now, to match the door, we'll actually do dark oak fences. Our uh, accent block was oak, and it still is, but I sort of realized that we did a dark oak door, so this would probably look better. We'll go ahead and do that all the way around, just like that. Now, from a distance, this actually looks complete, or at least a little bit more complete. Now, we need a way up onto the porch. I'm thinking right here, we'll just dig that out and turn this into a slab, and we should? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely good. That's good fix that up right there pretty easy and that looks good that actually looks like it uh, is finished and goes right into the wall then uh the rest of this area so first i definitely know that we need a sidewalk coming off of this house so we'll do a simple sidewalk one block wide uh, we're gonna need lots of dirt in here i'll have to fill that in but a simple sidewalk one block wide going from the porch to uh, another sidewalk actually that'll be out here and it'll be two blocks wide then uh this path i'll actually re-terraform this path to go up the hill and connect right over to here now over here these sidewalks and the paths will be a whole lot more organized in the future i might come in and build more houses for other for other people that live in the town but for now we'll just have pam's house but we will set it up in a way that uh, we could do really organized paths but i think i'm gonna need a little bit more of that this path will just go straight over this way which means i'll terraform this just a little bit more so we can't see the side of the path and then the driveway will actually be cut back one block after getting the path in i'll actually come back in here and break up all of this grass with a little bit of coarse dirt and then bushes and flowers the bushes will probably be birch leaves i think those will make nice bushes in here and then the flowers i'm thinking rose bushes because there's a little bit of red inside not that it's a big deal but on the bookcase there's red and just rose bushes look nice in general so i'll go ahead and get lots of gardens in I think what I'll do over here on this side is another big garden, but that garden will be outlined with probably cobblestone and mossy cobblestone slabs on the ground. Something kind of like this, just to make things feel a little bit more structured. The back side of the build, I am not too worried about. I'll probably do a little bit of terraforming back there, but not too much. I'm definitely going to be focusing on the front area of this build because that is what will actually be seen. Like I mentioned last episode, I don't know if I'm ever going to really do much um, do much behind the build, so I'm way more focused on this side. But uh, we've done everything today, like step by step, so I'm going to go ahead and just get the rest of this terraforming in now that I've explained it all, and I will terraform in here as well to make this all feel complete. I think that'll really help this area out quite a bit.
Oh, Pam. No, 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 Pam, 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 Pam. Don't, don't turn around. Don't turn around. Pam, it's your big day. You have a brand new house. All of the elites asked for it. You did not ask for it ever, I think, Pam. But, oh, man, Pam's house is done. So let's go ahead and take a look at the build. Uh, well, I, I should say, the house is done. The area around it still needs a few more tricks. But look at what happened while I was finishing the build. So patrols used to wander through here a lot, like so much to the to the point that I kind of just stopped showing them on camera and then they kind of randomly stopped one day and I guess I guess I got their back I, I got rid of the patrol no problem the other villagers took out the banner guy I did not get the effect but Pam's the house of Pam where are you what do you do you need this way Pam it is right here we have a mailbox we have a full landscaping beautiful Pam what do you think uh, no comment. No comment. You, uh, you no comment, Pam? Yeah, uh, okay. Pam, come, come inside. Come inside, Pam. It is getting late. You need to come inside. Uh, no, Pam. Okay, what are you, what are you doing? You're exploring. This is your property. You come in the house. Pam. Pam, appreciate the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we, you, you, yeah, yes, I didn't do the pack. I, I know, I know, I didn't. Okay, well, I finished the house, but Pam doesn't want to go inside, which is kind of a. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna need a lead, Pam. Ah, I didn't want to get the rope, but I will get the rope. Pam, you have not been good today, Pam. You have not been good. You are on the leash now. You're not let off of the leash. Get through the door. Yes, nice. Okay, so I finished Pam's house. Uh, the detailing went really, really nice, and I enjoyed terraforming the outside. One tip that I wanted to say about terraforming a build is flower palettes. So it's kind of a thing. Over here, this is just random. We have red, yellow, and blue, and, and it's fine. It, it's cool. There's three colors. That's usually my maximum. Over here, though, we have all reds if you can stick to one color palette with your flowers so like we have the peonies we have the rose bushes and then maybe if i were to have gotten like red tulips things would look really really good if you have a bunch of random flower colors it'll work but it'll also look hey pam come on come on okay yes uh, right there yeah i know it's beautiful this is your house pam you will live here now forever and i promise i won't forget about you pam i won't forget about you i'll i'll get you out of your house sometimes but yep uh that is pam's house i am really really happy with the build elites over here in the garage by the way nothing changed we have pam's trusty hoe right there and then the motorcycle nothing uh too too different in here i didn't do the backside. i decided to just go ahead and skip it we'll just bone meal back here that's good but the yellow flower is gonna have to go because we're using a red flower color palette here like i was mentioning if you can try and uh stick to a minimum on the flower colors things will kind of feel a whole lot more complete and intentional so we have the yellow and the the blue over here but that's because pam's yard is kind of over this is just back to a normal hill so i was kind of just waiting for more flowers to spread them everywhere like that. Now there is one more big thing that I would like to do and that is a gigantic oak tree. We haven't shown this tip off in this uh, the series quite yet because I haven't been able to do it, but oak tree on the ground, then two cobblestone up, then four cobblestone all the way around the top cobblestone, remove these two cobblestones, and then it's bone meal time. And when I say bone meal time, I mean a lot of bone meal. Um... Yep, I'm gonna need more. Over here, I have two stacks of bones. We shouldn't need two stacks necessarily. We'll go ahead and turn half of that into bone meal, but you can actually force grow those gigantic oak trees now don't get me wrong i love the custom trees it's very very fun in this world but i felt like doing one of these trees over here it's a little faster not gonna lie so uh now we have a gigantic tree right next to pam's house and i feel like that makes this area feel complete i'd like to actually come back here in the backyard and add one gigantic tree as well so let's say maybe maybe like right there that should be a good spot so two cobblestone like that then four around that top one and then we remove the center two and the random misplaced one as well so just like that then bone meal time now sometimes things can kind of mess up and you get like a small little balloon uh, oak tree here and if that happens then it just chop it down try it again but there we go trees can help a modern build a lot i mean think about a neighborhood in real life they, they do exist after all 
Trees are planted in neighborhoods to provide shade, but also to make things look nice and complete. And with the trees around the house, that house definitely feels 100% complete. And I am definitely super pleased with how this ended up. Now, in front of Pam's house, I decided to do a uh, very birch and sandstone heavy wall. So walls actually lower fence gates a little bit. That's why the fence gates are not on the same level as the fence. I think this makes a really interesting looking wall. I've never used a wall like this before, but we have wall, fence gate, fence. Fence gate, wall, and then I, I, I would go fence gate. You know, continue the whole thing over and over again. I think it makes a cool wall, and this wall separates this nice subdivision that will eventually be here maybe from the rest of our base so this is like our base but it's also kind of not at the same time we have a mailbox over here mail for pam whenever you know we'll go ahead and leave a leash in there pam could probably need that uh if we have to move pam in and out of the house it'll, it'll be good to have over there but elites that is actually going to be just about it for today's episode and the first modern house build of this world now will we do more well that's actually kind of up to you guys i'm gonna go ahead and leave a poll on screen right now and go ahead and vote in it would you like to see me build more modern houses in this world for other things because if you would like to i definitely could if i do it obviously won't be exactly the same as this one we'll do a different one you could build along copy it and uh if we did it again it probably wouldn't be over the span of two episodes it would just be an episode building another house is setting it in this world and then boom it's done i also hope you guys enjoyed this episode it was very very different uh, when compared to what we usually do in the series at least that's what i feel like but i wanted to do a detailing episode where i just detail and you kind of see my process like i said earlier on in the episode uh, everything that i showed off today that is my exact detailing process i sort of just go room by room or part of the build by part of the build work on it flesh it all out and try and make things feel balanced if you have a dark build use light tones if you are using flowers try and use flowers that are similar in color try and think outside of the box with things like motorcycles to help level your build up even more but uh that is just about it for pam's house i promise pam is not gone forever thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed today's episode let me know by dropping a like and subscribing all of my links are right down in the description below like my instagram twitch twitter and, you know everything like that until next time pam fam stay cool i'll see you in the next episode goodbye